sacred text for this morning does not come from the liturgical calendar. Our text comes from number six, 22 through 26. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come Holy Spirit, come heavenly dove with not just some, but all of your life giving power, I do pray. Touch us, revive us, renew us for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Amen. This is a blessing that you hear all the time. But do we know why and what caused this blessing to come forward? One only has to go to number six. This is a Nazarite vow, a Nazarite vow. Now I know benediction and all that means blessing, but this is much more than a blessing because it is incumbent upon you to do something and to be something. When a man or woman wanted to separate themselves to get closer to God or dedicate themselves to God during the days of Israel, this was called a vow of the Nazarite. It is like fasting and praying, but with divers, deep rules around it, deep rules. See, sometimes we keep God's way and the things that God wants us to do and requires of us a little surfacy. God is requiring us to go a little deeper this morning into something that we tend to utilize and just tag at the end of a service. God wants you to know exactly where this came, came from and what gave it to be in the priestly blessing, not anything else but the priestly blessing. And now we do believe in the priesthood of all believers, right? I'm not alone, alone in that call, by no means. So this requirement is not just to me, but it is to each of you as we flow to the next slide, Kenny. Speaking truth will shift the atmosphere. Guess what? Speak it anyway. Some of us want to come in and not rock the boat. I say rock it. The shift is necessary and past due. It is time for God's people to begin to stand up and to speak. This Nazarite blessing, if you're in it, and you're one of those people that said, I'm going to separate myself and consecrate myself. Then guess what you are? Affirmed of God. You are affirmed of God and you are affirmed of God. And you are required to speak the truth, to shift the atmosphere. The atmosphere must have a shift. How do you do that? Speaking the truth into it. It won't make you popular. but it will make you a child of God that's willing to walk into a room and be and say exactly everything God has called you to say and do. In these days and times, we don't need another pacifier for believers. We don't need another pacifier for mamas and daddies that aren't doing their job. We don't need another pacifier. We need someone to walk in and speak the truth. How inconvenient that may be. Truth, bringing people to a place that all that stuff that's hidden in them, when it hits you the right way, you're like, oh, yeah, that was, about, oh, wait a minute, that was about me too. So this is where believers can't be thinking too highly of themselves. But sometimes we're like, and then the truth hits you. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. 
God's truth is like that. It's exact. It will come in. This Nazarite blessing is very important. Because if you remember, we talked about the sons of Korah, those who wanted to challenge Moses and say, wait a minute, aren't we all holy? Well, God is saying, yeah, you are. Well, why are you the only one that's the leader? God said, well, tell them to go to their houses, their tents, and be there. And there God swallowed up those that were coming against the leadership that God set up. And remember I said when we talked about this last week, this ain't about me telling you, you can't say, Pastor, I think that was wrong. I don't live in that hokey dope. I don't live in that as a pastor. But sometimes that is utilized to control you and to give you another precept. And what is a precept? I have reminded you. A precept is something you are taught that causes you to govern yourself. And sometimes we'll govern ourselves thinking we're doing what's right and we're following a precept that is just another lie. Speak the truth in power and in love, knowing you are affirmed of God if God's calling you to do it. Speak the truth. Next slide, Kenny. Affirmed of God. This is not an easy one, I know. Nazarite comes from a word that means to dedicate. So you had a group of people that are saying, we're going to dedicate ourselves to God. Is that not you? Have you not dedicated yourself to the Lord God Almighty? Either for a brief period or for a lifetime. Their separation was twofold. To the Lord and from what defiled. Hello. It was twofold. You were making a dedication to the Lord and then you were dedicating that you would not come in contact with what will defile you. And sometimes, here's the kicker, sometimes what defiles us is that mind that sits between the soul and the spirit because you just won't get it right. You've let too many people dip in your mind. No, get your mind right with God because you have made a vow to separate yourself to consecrate yourself to the Lord and to stay away from what will defile you. And you will know you have it when sometimes people come to defile you with ugly words and things like that. And you just keep right on looking like, okay, okay. That's where they're living. It's not where you're living. That's where they're living. It's not where you're living. You are affirmed of God. Affirmed of God. When God says something is wrong, it is wrong. No matter how small a thing it may seem to be. It is wrong in this age for believers not to do the hard work of study, not just require it of the preacher. It is your job to know your God, not for me to know God for you. That's what Moses did. That's what the people wanted Moses to do. Go talk to God and then come back and tell us we're afraid of God. I'm telling you, if you're still afraid of God, you missed your affirmation. Remember when we talked about the Sakah coming into that place of worship where it's just you and your God. That's what God is affirming to you. You have a right to be there. And so many of us, no matter what, walk in for whatever reason, we're too short, we're too tall. Might Some might think, well, we may not be affirmed every time we walk in somewhere. Why are you here? That's where you walk in like God sent you. And then remember, God has never called us to wake up sheep, but to wake up the lions. And I need to start hearing the lions roar. You are the children of the living God. You are not pushovers. When someone comes to you and wants to put into you something of God, they need to have a track work. They need to be able to show you where did that come from? How I get people do that to me all the time, except for most of the people here at Beth Saint. Question me. Being the preacher and the spiritual leader doesn't give me a right to mess with your spiritual mind. Why? Because you are affirmed of God, not a Charlotte. You are affirmed of God. 
not of little old Charlotte. This is a, a refocusing of who you are in Christ Jesus. If you declare that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, are you not already affirmed? Have you not already taken that Nazarite vow to separate yourself from certain things that might defile you? And then have that willingness to have that voice of God in you so strong that sometimes you can walk into what you think would defile you and set it on fire and make it holy. By your mere presence, it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Let's start breaking some people. We are affirmed of God. We are affirmed of God. How many people missed an opportunity to talk, say another word to someone that was going to shoot someone or to say another word to someone that just wanted to be angry and would not do it because they didn't want to get involved. After all, we're good Americans. We don't get involved in other people's business. We just watch and pull out our phone and record it. The affirmed of God, surely not. We'll record everything, put it on Facebook for follows, but we will not walk up to a sister and say, now you know uh, your hair piece is coming off. You do know I can see back. The affirmed of God should not be doing that. And then we wonder why the children, the affirmed of God have access to God. The problem is we've given everything access to our children and us, but God. When one rap song can send your child off in a frizzy, you've given too much access to that voice. Because the children have to be taught by you to find the light in the situation. Just like I find the light in Lil Wayne. And Lil Wayne says, not everybody lives, but everybody dies. Oh, that's true. Some of us let our whole lives pass us back by and don't even live. And we'll get to God and be down in the mouth. You had every opportunity. You are affirmed of God. You are not affirmed of this world. And when you are affirmed of this world, you need to check it. Because you're in it, you're not of it. But when the world starts affirming you, you better go, wait a minute, I must be doing something. Why? Because the path we have been set on is the narrow path. Broad and wide is the path to destruction. That is the world. No way around it. The affirmed of God should be able to walk in a room and set changes. Whether people even in hearts and minds, they don't even know whoa, what happened. I have a relative that has that type of ashe, and I've told you what ashe is. It's an African spiritual term that is considered stronger than an amen. It means I'm saying, yes, that's the God energy in me, the God breath, the ashe, hence the way it's said. He can walk in and his ashe, he said, I've walked in place, the whole room stops and looks at me. I say, hey, because the affirmed of God is in the house. That's happened to some of you, and you don't even know why. Now you know. God sent you. Dare to be the one to speak truth to power, sometimes to say what's inconvenient and not so quick to say what's convenient. Because in doing so, you are just like Jesus. John the Baptist and Isaiah and Jeremiah. They would speak what was inconvenient. Even sometimes while telling God, God, why do I have to say it? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> this command that came forward as we go to the next slide, Kenny, this is important. This Nazarite blessing is so important because the portal to every next level is through the parts of yourself that you avoid. What I was just, you avoid sometimes being the voice. You would rather recess into the corners rather than coming forward and saying, I don't agree with that. That's not of God. Can you unpack that a little more in the sacred text? Start to say that to preachers. 
Have you not witnessed what the church is going through? You must begin to tell us, wait a minute. Come back. What context is that coming from? What was the world that that happened in? The world before, the world in, and the world after the text. This sacred text is just that. It's life-changing, but it can ruin your life in the wrong hands. It has. So the affirmed of God need to wake up. You are affirmed whether I say it or not. I'm not the affirmer. And neither is any other preacher. Make sure that's on YouTube. We're not the affirmer of you. It is God. In this sense, all new covenant believers serve God as perpetual Nazarites who are not defiled by death for our Savior has conquered death. In our vow of holiness, we offer our lives as a living sacrifice in service to Christ. I urge you then, brothers and sisters, remembering the mercies of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, dedicated and acceptable to God. That is the kind of worship for you as sensible people. Do not, do not model your behavior on the contemporary world, but let the renewing of your minds transform you so that you may discern for yourselves what is the will of God? Yeah, you got that. That was for yourself, right? What is good and acceptable and mature. In other words, sometimes you need to put the ninny down, the, the passing down. No, you might have to whine about it and cry. God will get you through it. Because God has called me to do things before. And I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. You do it. Whatever God calls you to do, you just do it and you do it decent and in order. This is your God after all. This is your God that's affirming you. This is my God. When I go to God, I'm just like you, God. I'm not going over God, I'm the pet. God. The same God that affirmed me affirms you. I'm not alone in the affirmation, not alone at all. Michael Jackson put it like this, you are not alone, I am here with you, though we're far apart, you're always in my heart, you are not alone, you are affirmed of the one who is El El Elyon, the most high God, the one who gave us Yeshua Hamashiach. And in this blessing, the name that was utilized, and the priest would chant this, Aye Asha Aye. That name came when Moses said, Well, uh, excuse me, Mr. God. Who do I who do I tell sent me? Aye Usher Aye. You tell them Aye Usher Aye sent you. And Moses is like, Okay, now think about it. I will be what I will be. I am that I am. I will be what I will be is sending you and you and you and you. Affirmed of the Lord, rooted in the Savior, affirmed. Go in the power, that affirming message of, aye, usher, aye, I will be what I will be. And then don't be surprised when God will be what God will be in you. The portal to every next level is through the parts of yourself that you avoid. What have you avoided? That affirming hand of God will send you places. You just look at the life of Jesus. I say you couldn't go home. He had no respect there. After all, they knew his mama and his daddy. Didn't want him in the temple because he was preaching and teaching stuff the priest didn't even know. Couldn't walk down the street. People were all over him. Fed the people. Then he had a bunch of people follow him. But yet he was affirmed of God. And so are you. Ken, that was the last slide.
One more. All right. Women and men make special vows. The vow, this was not something, sometimes we see things more gender related. This vow is not at all. Amen. All the days of his separation, he is holy to Aye Usher Aye. So these are 15 words, and yet they portray a world of trust and faith in God. They are partially quoted in Psalms 4, verse 6, and Psalm 67, verse 1. And tradition has it that in the temple, the priest would chant these verses boldly and joyfully, even using the personal name of God revealed to Moses, as I just shared with you. I was already into this slide, Kitty. <laughs> but when a man or a woman makes this special vow, and you have made that vow, the minute you said, yes, hold, something inside of me is telling me this man, they call Jesus, is the son of God. And I... And you are believing. It's bearing witness to you that you it's the truth. Don't think because the truth was in you. No, it was the spirit of truth in you telling you it was true. And you become affirmed of God. Never look at this the same way when you're walking out of church and someone says, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep. Never. If that has to do, it's a priestly blessing that was given to Moses to go to Aaron, but it is a God blessing to you because you have been consecrated and set apart and you stay away from what defiles you. Amen. 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 